Like, I bet there are people who are, like, more fans of the podcast than the band, but we're going to make them see the band. Yeah. If they want to see us, they're going to see us in band form. It's like, the, <laughs> but it's going to be the opposite. So I've played many shows where people are like, shut up and play. They're going to be like, oh, stop yeah. playing and talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, That'd be cool. Don't play the hits. <laughs> Hey, my name is Jim Ward. I'm a musician from El Paso, Texas. I also own this restaurant, Eloise, with my wife, Christine. During the pandemic, I started to have some conversations with friends and friends of friends on Instagram Live. Now that things have opened up a little bit, we've started to be able to do it in person. We call it Let's Get a Drink. So, let's get a drink. Um, hey, sloppy boys, let's get a drink. <laughs> Agreed. <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> Cheers. The Corona's three. Cheers. Well, welcome. Is this your first time in, in West Texas? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. I drove through once, uh, but this is my first time spending a lot of time on a peanut farm. I went to a wedding once in Texas, and I can't remember where what. Uh, maybe it was New Mexico. So, yes. <laughs> yes. Ballpark. Yes. <laughs> New Mexico South. New Mexico at one point was Texas. Yes, that's what I meant. So you're actually really smart. That's what I always oh, mean, yeah. and people you're don't understand me. Behind the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, was his wedding in like the 1800s? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went with my friends Doc and Marty. <laughs> what? Um, so I know you guys are here making a record, working on record with with some other with some other folks. Um, why did you choose here to make a record? Also, like, let's just get into who you guys are. If you want to introduce yourselves and what you do, really quick. I'm Mike. I'm Tim. I'm Jeff. And we are the Sloppy, Sloppy. Boys. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> if I Where, where we started doing comedy, and we, uh, from that we became a band, and then from that we became a podcast, and now we're returning to being a band, <laughs> post COVID. Because it was, a, we were in this sketch comedy group that was large, and we had a TV show and stuff like that, and then coming out of that, uh, I mean we're still friends with all those guys, but we were the musicy ones amongst this big sketch group, so we started a little band. Did you, in in your path? Did all of you sort of start in comedy? I'm always fascinated by by comics, particularly. Um, or was it music, and then you discovered comedy, or comedy first? Comedy first, for sure. Yeah, yeah. We we've always liked music, but never. Uh, I didn't play any any bands. Jeff, you played in a band in high school, and yes. Tim, you've been playing music for a long time. Um, I was like a bedroom guitar guy, but you were at, you were at a high school band, right? Yeah, we weren't good. <laughs> not many are. Not many are. Yeah, we're yeah. still not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, we, we all went to Ithaca, uh, in Ithaca College in upstate New York, uh -huh. and we were all uh, film and TV majors. You guys were more like comedy, comedy people, mm -hmm. I think. But um, I'm a video guy, and I like funny people, so we started a sketch. You like group. the movie Funny People? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Judd Apatow, what am I thinking of? No, no, you're good. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, oh, I was thinking Funny Games. Whew. Not, oh, that's, that's, no, that's a better that's, movie. Not, not a comedy, though. But that's a little scary. Uh, but yeah, so so it was definitely uh, sketch comedy. And then we, we used to have these, like, parties. That we all lived together at a house in L.A., and we'd have these, like, backyard parties. And we uh, we had a Weezer cover band. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Weezer. Weezer. <laughs> <laughs> no take. Oh, we, had a, we had a party after, okay. We shot some videos, our sketch comedy group, for Jose Cuervo, web videos, back when brands would give you, would find young sketch groups and say like, hey, we need some web content. Can you make some videos for us? So we shot some videos in a bar. And then when you shoot in a bar, they don't want any competitors' labels on the back bar. So they bring in 30 boxes of Cuervo and their family of brands to fill it. We finished shooting and they said, all this is trash unless you want it. This is all just art department to us. So we went home with, no joke, 12, boxes, 12 boxes full of tequila. 12 uh, boxes? Holy or like shit. 10 boxes of 12 bottles yeah. per. Yeah. And we said, we're going to have a big backyard party, just tequila. <laughs> and on the uh, back then, it was like Facebook invites or evites or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we had a party, and, and it, we just wrote like a concert ticket would say, Jose Cuervo presents Weezer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and we then, told everyone, you know, we will provide tequila, 
bring whatever you want, bring beers you want, but all we are going to have is tequila. <laughs> Nobody brought anything, so there was no mixers, there's nothing, yeah. there's just and straight tequila. All the horror that would fall crazy. over people's faces when they realized, like, it's all you can drink. Tequila only. only. Tequila. <laughs> there was, like, we had, we provided no beer, <clears throat> any, any mixers, anything. No water. No. No, <laughs> no ice. And no it turned into, like, an angry no just bottle. No to use the bathroom. <laughs> I see that going pretty poorly, pretty quick. It went. It was very good. fun. Very. It was quick. fun, but it was like it had like a ferocious vibe, and then what? it turned into. It's like everybody you know getting tequila drunk at one time, <laughs> and and it sort of has like a uh, amplifier effect when it's everybody. Yeah. It's like yeah. a tidal wave that kind of took people. <laughs> yeah. It was. Nice. And especially we had a friend who shot little bits of uh, video throughout the night just to kind of, and we watched it the next day, and it was like normal party and by the end it's like everyone's screaming in each other's face while Weezer's playing you know and they're like we're all singing and going crazy the best we, we did the whole I, I we're huge Weezer fans and I saw you open for Weezer uh, at Jones Beach mm -hmm. one time it was a great show and we but like uh, Weezer was like our touchstone <laughs> I might have seen you open for Weezer too keep going um, this this was 2002 mm -hmm. Maladroit tour mm, I don't know yeah <laughs> where'd you see him mm. I've there's, seen them like three or four times. But it's say it's us, song, Dashboard. And, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jones Beach. That was so fun. Mine that was, was a good uh, Woods, not Woodstock. Oh, God. Where I'm from. Great Woods. Hmm? Great Woods. Foxwoods? Foxwoods. Boston? Boston. Great. Yeah. 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 Damn. We were just talking about that tour. We actually got banned from the backstage. <laughs> um, <laughs> for what? For too much fun, essentially. So we, we, we had like uh, a game of CeeLo. Like a, an ongoing game of CeeLo, and we would play every day. And we CeeLo, had, we, you mean? CeeLo is like a three dice game uh, oh, okay. for money. Um, yeah. And then we just, it was pretty out of hand. Our drum tech was also my drink tech. So, like, after a song, I would flick my cup if it was empty, and he would fill it up, put it back on my amp. So, <laughs> That's cool. within, a, within a second of just going to my amp, I'd flick it, and then another one would come up, and I'd go back to playing. What were you drinking beers? Or? So, that time was we were in a big cranberry vodka and Jameson Coke phase. So we were just, and I just ended my uh, vodka Red Bull phase. Which are, was, those are all the drunks of the era. Early mm -hmm. 2000s, we're talking about that's like before cocktail culture comes back. Yeah, yeah. And it was like mixed drinks. It's yeah. like blank and blank. Yeah. It was just pure sugar. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> it was, it was awful. But that tour was amazing to see Weezer every day, mm -hmm. who were obviously incredible and and a, and a lot of fun. So tequila yeah. Weezer for me feels pretty normal. Yeah, that actually. was a, that's like, your background as well. I feel like that's a that's an easy thing. So timeline wise, you guys all go to Ithaca, go to LA obviously because that's where work is, right? Mm -hmm. um, have the Weezer tequila party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, your Weezer at the party. We're Weezer. Yeah. Okay. And was then this, it was another. This was there anyone it was just <laughs> you guys doing Weezer, right? It, at first it was it was a Weezer party yeah. and then it went so well. We did another one called Fredonia Fest because we lived on Fredonia Drive and our friends' bands would do cover sets. Oh, wow. So yeah. we had a Smashing Pumpkins and a Green Day. Oh, man. Did a Springsteen cover band in it? Specifically Dark, uh, Darkness at the Edge of Town. <laughs> was that you? <laughs> Who was that? That's Rob. Like, oh, we're, and then um, we, had a, we had a ska, a ska band. <coughs> COVID. But we opened the night up as a cover band. We were the Sloppy Boys jangly band at the time. Oh, yeah. That we, was we our like, first show that, ever. Is that how that? you started? We, yeah. were, we were like the house band because we were like, right. we want all these bands to play. Nobody wants to play first. Right, so yeah, our, just like the house guys right. will play. And back then it was the Sloppy Boys jangly band because we sort of liked the idea of like a rambling, jangling, like, yeah. you know, jam band. Tequila, so yeah, yeah it's cute. So. And we, we started playing when no one was there, like two so that people could arrive to music. <laughs> we were like, we want yeah. music like to be board. going when they show up. I and like then we the did dedication. I like the dedication. <laughs> we did a late set too. So. Oh yeah, I came back around. And Ben Stiller came to that. He did, yeah. Right. That was funny. Yeah, we, I remember being all sweaty, like finishing our our dick round thing, all drunk, and someone would be like, Ben wants to say hi, and be like. Ben who? What the fuck? We have yeah, another we, friend named Ben. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was like, I'll talk to him later. I remember playing drums and somebody came up and was like, Ben wants to say hi. And I was like, don't fuck off. I don't know. Like, I'm going to see him uh, when I see you him. You sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bad move. Well, we, we, the, we were on a TV show and he was, his company produced it. They didn't just show up to oh, work. Right, right. And we had, just, we had just gotten picked up. So he, he wasn't went, a neighbor. Yeah. yeah he, he How did your his, neighbors get on with this? They were okay. That was the only party we ever threw that they... Well, the cops were called because we were too loud. Our immediate neighbor was Mickey Avalon. I don't know if you're familiar. Mm -mm. A rapper. He's like a trashy 
Right. And a song that was like, my dick. My dick. Uh, uh, no, 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 your dick. No, no, no. <laughs> and then also, no, no, no. Uh, Stefan Marbury was our other neighbor. <laughs> NBA player, right next door, yeah. But we were, we were situated on a, such a steep hill that I think a lot of the noise we would make would just get like eaten up by the, <clears> by the <throat> hill. It was a good place when you moved to L.A. as six dudes in a three-person house. <laughs> that was... It was yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a good I'm familiar fit. with that lifestyle yeah. for sure. Oh yeah, I had like one of those like hallway rooms where it's like you just have to walk past my room to get to another guy's bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like mm, a guy had a room in his room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had basically the living room but downstairs with a bed mm-hmm. in like the corner next to the drum set and the amps. I spent a lot of time just in a van where everybody's room was a van. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting into that van life. It's a good life. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to do it now, but it's a good life. We're doing a little tour in uh, two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Two weeks from now? East Coast, starting in South Carolina, going up to, like, Boston. So is it the comedy that drives the music? Yeah. Like, where do the where do the fans come from? From comedy. They come from comedy. From from podcast, hearing us on podcasts and knowing our. That's birthday funny. boy show. And then when, about that, but yeah, it's true. There's almost no one that's just like a music fan. That oh, why would they? Be? <laughs> you wouldn't come to see us. But you would, you, um, I've noticed our Spotify algorithm. It's like if you listen to like Tim Heidecker or Whit Thomas, you get get a lot of Spotify. I mean, you get a lot of Sloppy Boys in your feed, mm-hmm. and those guys are like. I wouldn't call Tim Heidecker's music joke music. You know, he makes some very good music, but he's a funny guy. He, he and Wit and Don't Stop or Will Die and like there are a couple others where it's like they're clearly comedy dudes, but they are trying. They're not Rolling Stones, The Who, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there like a li- a line in the sand where I wonder because as a musician and as a writer, you you obviously have non comedic thoughts, right? Yeah. It's not you're not a hundred percent comedy all the time. Is there a line in the sand where you say like, "Yeah, I'll you like a rare <laughs> But like, do you do you have other music aspirations that are non-comedy driven, or is that like I, I just wonder in the world of of comedy if that's like looked right? So dudes and bands can't be actors, right? But actors can be dudes and bands, or whatever the right, whichever right. way it works. It doesn't work one yeah. way or it works the other way. I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm, I'm neat. I'm not an actor. It doesn't matter to me. See, but I, I think it is a two-way street. We always say like comedians want to be rock stars and rock stars want to be comedians. I would say that's 100%. Yeah. I do go... So I went to go see Kevin Hart the other day uh-huh. and I was like, the overhead on this shit is nothing. It's like, a man on oh, stage. Yeah. Holy fuck. You bring a stool. Where, My was God. He, was it a huge stadium type show? It was his warm-up. His warm-up was uh. six shows in three days at the 2500 seater which i've played right and i was just thinking like when we were here we spent i don't know how much money being in this room and yeah, this dude yeah, has right. a microphone right it's amazing and then again we were having the same conversation talking about steve martin in the 70s right with yeah. one microphone in like stadiums right mm-hmm. and a banjo and an arrow through the head but yeah, yeah but right. that's it right <laughs> those arrows are negligible yeah, like does he have an arrow <laughs> tech guy that's yeah. like has a box of them <laughs> it's or another whatever. truck with the arrows <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> he breaks them at the end of each well, show are you ever tempted to become like a, a laptop guy you're singing and the, all the music is playing and you travel real light and uh, so, uh, so we we just did a tour as a three piece mm-hmm. and that's the smallest touring ensemble i've ever done and that's it for me i can't i can't get any bass smaller drums, than guitar bass drums. Drums. yeah yeah, can't get any smaller than that. And it was kind of a, a bit of an experiment to see if we could carry it as a three-piece as Sparta. Like it wasn't, I've done solo tours as a three-piece, but never Sparta or whatever. And it, it went well and it was fun and it was economically better, I would say. Right, yeah. Right. We've talked about this before where you see so many <coughs> solo people with maybe just a laptop program beat or whatever and playing guitar, if that. And it's, uh, I think it's just a money thing where you can make more money as a solo artist because you don't have to spread it. There's not much money to be made. There's not. Yeah. So, so it's easier to just split, split it one way than with. Yeah. Especially, I just need air, though. I need air to move. Like yeah. I need, yeah. I need symbols to push air across me, and I uh-huh. need like. There's an energy to that. I yeah, think yeah. that that yeah. is not. Mm-hmm. I could never be a, a laptop. I can go solo acoustic. That's as like. Yeah. Whatever, but even that, three shows into that, and I'm just like, I'm bored of me. So I can't imagine anybody else. So Yeah, I mean, playing a whole long set of solo acoustic, like it feels like it would be really fun for 20 minutes or something, but to do like an hour of solo acoustic. I'm, I'm blanking on the name. Who, uh, Chris Farron. Have you know Chris Farron? Mm-hmm. He does some really fun. He, we did a show with him once. He does some fun. He's Great. solo. He's got a looping pedal, and he's got a cool... Um, like visual o- stuff o- playing yeah, behind him. Yeah. So he's he's like made it into a whole show. And he I can he see kind that. of dresses up. He goes in the crowd and stuff. He's, yeah, he does. He puts it on. 
But I, I think that well. that's a, a, a skill I don't have for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I do see the appeal of, I mean, because some of my favorite moments of playing a show are making the crowd laugh. Like, I love yeah, that yeah. part of being in a band. Like, I'm always, it's always, for the most part, a lighthearted, and I like to make fun of myself and mm -hmm. whatever the thing is. And mm -hmm. I can't imagine the thrill of doing that. Like, I love going to see stand-up comedy. Obviously, I don't, yeah. I don't think I could do it. Probably have to start younger, I'm sure. <laughs> no. Have there been any, besides... I'm trying to think of any musicians that made that switch from from music to yeah. comedy. Oof. Not not to have it super successfully. I mean, there's always like pilots like John Mayer has yeah. a sketch comedy pilot. Kanye yeah. Kanye West had a curb your enthusiasm. Like uh, there's a lot of pilots, and then they don't like. I think it's it's like if you if you're used to the musician life, especially if you're like a big star, I think that you realize that comedy is a lot of like unfun work, like shooting. When you're like block shooting a TV show and you're like, okay, we well shot half the scene and go back in your trailer for four hours while we turn the lights around or whatever, yeah. it's like kind of an unfun life. And a lot of people yeah. lose interest in it. Yeah, like, why do we have to do that again? You really do have to love it. Like Reggie Watts was on Comedy Bang Bang. He took to that pretty well though, right? Reggie he's, was he's a comedian too though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fred Fred Armiston. It would be one I could see. Yeah, there, you yeah. Go. there you go. So oh, actually, right. Because he was a legit drummer in yeah, Chicago. Trench right. mouth. Yeah. yeah. So I I saw them we we I don't, I don't think we played with him, maybe. We played a show with Fred. Yeah, we, we were in like the IFC All-Star Super Group with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, because his show was on the same as ours. It was like the same Same line. network as ours. And oh, and then like, Carrie, I guess, too. Yeah, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Your second to last uh, show at the Roseland Ballroom. That's, it's crazy how funny she is, and that's not even, it's not even like she had this like long ramp up to comedy. Oh, she yeah, she's doing. great. Yeah. Um, but very few. John, uh, very few, what's his name? Few. John Wor uh, Worcester. Uh, Worcester. Oh, yeah. oh yes, he, he's big. On, I've never heard this show, but uh, best show, right? Isn't that oh, his? There's oh, some people I just know his uh, yeah. Instagram is hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's hilarious, and like, yeah, I feel like anyone like our age that grew up in Philadelphia, that radio show, Tom Sharpling and him, that's like their whole life. It's just like his his prank calls. I think people are obsessed with him. <laughs> Somebody just told me about that. There's like a good best of to listen to because there's probably such a huge catalog, but there's like a good best of to get into. I might just. <laughs> what's the um like what's the trajectory like where did where does this where do you guys want to i mean i know you're doing a tour is that something that you want to do more of we want to go to the yeah. where does it go let's do you have a telescope i'll show you the yeah. fucking movie <laughs> right, that's where it goes i mean the, it's it's the we have the luxury of it being driven by fun mm -hmm. and we're having a blast doing it but it's like we still do Jeff's a director, I'm a writer, Mike's a comedian. We're all, we're doing our own stuff and then this band is like a joyous thing we do yeah. and it's more fun than those other things mm -hmm. because music's the most fun. Um, so we'll just keep doing, we want to go, we want to do, you know, play all those nights at that same theater that Kevin right. Hart played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as much as we can trick podcast fans into seeing the band and like make it seem like all one thing so yeah. we can kind of snowball it, like I bet there are people who are like, more fans of the podcast than the band, but we're going to make them see the band. Yeah. If they want to see us, they're going to see us in band four. <laughs> it's like, the, but it's going to be the opposite. So I've played many shows where people are like, shut up and play. They're going to be oh, like, stop yeah. playing and talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't That'd be cool. Don't play the hits. Don't play anything. <laughs> well, we've definitely talked since, because uh, so we've been doing a podcast for a year. Basically and COVID, like almost yeah, as soon as COVID. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. you did yeah. with, with yeah. the podcast. And it's like a cocktail yeah. podcast. And so the audience for that, like we played in Chicago this fall and it was our first time since the podcast playing live. And we did choose a real sparse set list. And we were like, I guess we'll jibber jabber yeah. for instead of like one funny line between songs, like we'll talk, we'll talk for, for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind I of I guess you gotta find that balance, right? Because it's yeah, it's uncharted playing. territory. Mm -hmm. Podcast fans are interesting because they're like, into, like uh, they 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 kind of know you. There's a parasocial thing going on, and they're like, it, it, it's a it's a weird thing. Like I've never gone to a live podcast taping. I kind of think they're a waste of money to go pay a ticket <laughs> <laughs> because it's going to be on your phone the next day or like the next week yeah. or whatever. But I've been. I mean, people do love them, and there's like a very personal connection. Like they're they they're like your friends. Oh yeah, they're your. You're, when you listen to a podcast, you're letting people in your head for like an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. And uh, weekly, and oftentimes. people in your head who are talking very candidly and casually. Yeah. To their it's other friends, a, so you feel like you're hanging out with your friends. Yeah. Even if you're listening to like a comedy album, 
that's different than a podcast. I'd see, you know, because it's like comedy album. Someone's got a mm. somewhat scripted set they're doing. Yeah, and like so podcast just body of work. Like a, and because it's ears only, I think it invites. I think it hacks the brain more. Like if there was a visual aspect, you could see that they weren't talking to you, right? Or but that you, you weren't included. Your imagination makes that leap, right? right? Whereas you're on the don't, the subway or you're you know, on your commute. It's very personal, and it's yeah. like in your ears, and you're like just well, picturing what you want. What was cool in Chicago? We had a bunch of fans, podcast fans come out who had never met each other in real life before. That's, they met that each other on the Yeah, Discord, then you see your Discord. community built. Uh, yeah, yeah, they came was, out, they all knew each other, we hung out with them afterwards, we got to know them, they were all super cool. Uh, have you used really Discord? Fun. I don't, I don't, but I'm familiar with it. That yeah. was that was like a thing that uh, our buddy said, like you have to use Discord, and, and to us it was just like, come on, we already have people telling us to get on TikTok, we don't need the new fucking app. Yeah. But, and he said, it's cool. I remember he was like, Discord isn't a place for you to connect with fans. It's a place for your fans to connect with each other. Yeah. And it, and it was nowhere more true than when people were, like, setting up meetups at our Chicago show. Like, they yeah. did it independently. They were already talking on, like, message boards. They style. did a secret Santa. Yeah, and there were, like, 12 or 20 people <laughs> at the yeah. Chicago show were, like, meeting each other for the first time. Well, it was crazy. That is awesome. I think – thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk to me, and I appreciate okay. it. I know there's a, 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 a new thing that we're trying, and, and – um, I just want to say thank you. Have for, for, Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having a drink. Yep. That's great. Perfect. 20 minutes exactly. Really? Oh, look at that. You've got that yeah. broad past your feeling. I saw the wings going back. <laughs> got the light. <laughs> Mama, she's so uptight, she's so uptight, she's so uptight. 